Hello everyone and welcome to my attempt to land a Tesla Roadster on the surface of Mars in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 with the Realism Overhaul set of mods. Here we of course have a Falcon Heavy and there we go for launch. I was lucky enough to find a mod with a Tesla Roadster in it on the forums. It's Fast Core Auto Garage, Real Cars for KSP. And it has a lot of cars in it, but one of them is a Tesla Roadster, and it works pretty well. I adjusted it so it had the correct mass. It didn't need too much adjusting. It did need to be rescaled a little bit to be the right dimensions for a Tesla Roadster, because it was more Kerbal-sized. Not quite fully Kerbal-sized, but a little bit more Kerbal-sized. And its top speed is indeed 130 miles an hour on the surface of the Earth. I tested it. Uh, but we don't know its performance on Mars yet, so that's what we're trying to find out, I guess. So this Falcon Heavy, same launch script as I used in my previous video in KSP 1.1.3 where I did the booster landings. Uh, here we are not going to follow the boosters down because I'm following the payload. In 1.2.2 you'll note they don't separate as cleanly as they do in 1.1.3. That's why I did it in 1.1.3 because uh, even though it's the same script, uh, same Separatron, same craft file altogether, uh, it didn't work quite right. Uh, also, the timing of the fairings and first stage separation is a little bit weird here. Uh, we do have to carry the fairings for quite a longer period of time than I would like. But uh, there we go with the separation. We do have to expend the core in order to be able to land this on Mars. So we're no longer just a test roadster. We've got actually I wanted an aero shell. Uh, a full aero shell for this to make it look legit and you can see I have a little fairing base there for the aero shell but the problem was putting the fairings inside another procedural fairing that did not work out there was glitchiness and unavoidable glitchiness so I had to leave the fairings off but we have the interstage fairing base there still here we are making orbit with 5,000 meters per second left in the stage and the transfer to Mars takes uh, regularly 3,600 to 4,400 we're actually at the top of that range and I guess you could consider the spare to be whatever additional mass is on the center core. I haven't really accounted for that. The center core is just a regular Falcon 9 core right now. So there is a matter of how I'm accounting for the additional mass that they've put on the core. And we, we do have some spare here to, to account for that. So I feel pretty comfortable. We're trying to launch 5 tons to Mars. I'm letting Mechjeb handle this transfer, this maneuver. And uh, you'll see why I don't normally do that. Uh, see, it reignites again. And then it reignites again, trying to get that last little bit on the maneuver node. Yeah, th that's why I normally don't use MechJeb for this. Uh, because, of course, in Realism Overhaul, we have limited ignitions. Thankfully, we do have enough ignitions on the Merlin 1D vacuum engine to take care of that. Here, I'm using RCS to get the... Mars periapsis closer to Mars, but we do need a correction of about 32 meters per second. And I start that out with the RCS, but let uh, Mechjeb try to use the ignitions again. We have three left on the engine, and uh, here it goes. The reason I'm using Mechjeb is because I wanted to just try it out to see how it would do before I write my own KOS script for doing the maneuvers. And, of course, uh, I know now one flaw that I'm going to have to avoid when writing the KOS script. Okay, here we've got the separation of the payload. And the payload zone RCS is pulling it away. You can see the payload has a lot of delta V, 1,400 meters per second. It does not need that much. I, I really wanted to make sure that we were tossing a certain amount to Mars. And that's why it has all that fuel. So here we are, making sure our solar panels will stay aligned with the sun, and we are approaching Mars. You'll notice that the heat shield doesn't have any ablator on it, and we could have put ablator on it and just uh, put less fuel, but it turns out that we don't really need ablator approaching Mars with these heat shields, and so I just left it off. What we really need from the heat shield is drag, and with a 5 meter diameter heat shield like this, it can accommodate at most 15 tons. And we've only got 5 tons, so it's great. It's uh, going to be an easy capture and uh, descent, and it's got to slow us down by quite a lot. Here I'm trying out a touchdown script so that it will uh, automatically run the thrusters. I'm not going to manually control it. But this is the first time I'm trying this script out, and as you can see, I have some errors. So we're already in the atmosphere of Mars, and I'm uh, trying to fix these errors in the script on the fly. And ultimately... I get a version that I think will work out with it as we are getting effects 
indicating indicating that we're slowing down. You can see, I mean, uh, there's there's no no uh, little overheating symbol. If we flipped around, the thing would blow up. I mean, it's not that there's no heat. Um, if we flipped around, it'd blow up immediately. It's just that the heat tolerance of the heat shield is good enough without the ablator. So here we are, and of course that's important for SpaceX because um, if they're gonna land either Dragon capsules or BFR on Mars, you don't want to have to replace, you know, a bunch of stuff on the bottom of your craft every time. You want to be able to reuse them without that, and landing on Mars allows you to do that. Uh, landing on Earth does not. Uh, you will have to uh, refurbish things. But here we go, let's see how the little script does for touchdown. And the problem is these little Super Dracos, they're actually Super Draco thrusters that I've put on here. Um, they, uh, well, they lit up like right at the end there, but I didn't account for the fact that they were tilted out. And also they don't have the sound. They have the engine light, but not the sound. They don't have a plume either. So that was a bit of a hard landing because the script really didn't account for the fact that they're tilted out by 45 degrees. So I had to fix that. But here I separate off the sky crane without uh, lighting its um, separatrons, uh, so that goes flying off. And uh, separate off the base. <laughs> Not exactly how this was supposed to go. And the car is obviously not in the best of positions. Yeah, this is, well, well, it's sort of on its side now. Can it right itself? Now, if Elon Musk made a properly designed Tesla Roadster, surely it would right itself on Mars, right? That's how those work. Eh, it's rolling a little bit further. Judging from how it's sort of rolling around, I get the strange feeling that this is not going to have much grip on Mars. And besides that, we end up having another problem. Even though I tested it on Earth and uh, made sure that the wheels were aligned right, here, uh, the wheels were obviously not turning properly, at least on one side, so we had a wheel alignment problem. Uh, they had to be rotated 90 degrees. But anyway, I tried again. Of course, I redid the script, made sure it accounted for the fact that the thrusters were angled, uh, which just means adding another number in. Actually, it's more like adjusting the number that already handles the fact that the throttle range doesn't go from 0 to 100, it actually goes from like uh, 20 or 30 something to 100. So, yeah, just adjusting that number uh, fixes the problem. And so here the engines are actually lit, you can't hear them, but you can see the engine light. And, well, not quite perfect because uh, I have to adjust the little throttle range again and try and see exactly what number will work. But at least it landed upright. That's a positive. Might be even better than I would have done it. Sky Crane gets thrown off by the Cepatrons. And we have our car. Now, on the surface of the Earth, uh, it decoupled and successfully drove off, even with the heat shield there. You might wonder why I didn't dump the heat shield. The problem is that the heat shield has so much drag that even when we have the parachutes out, it comes back and slams us. So, yeah. The heat shield shape is sort of the ideal drag shape. Uh, aero shells overall are exactly the shape that you want when you're trying to get uh, drag from Mars. Uh, because Mars has that thin atmosphere, you really want to optimize your shape to get the drag. And, uh, well, anyway, here we are trying to get off of there, but the car just doesn't have enough grip with the wheels to push itself off, and we sort of got ourselves stuck anyway. Uh, not the best angle. So anyway, uh, Tesla Roadster on Mars. <laughs> Not the ideal situation, but call it a proof of concept. Uh, we know basically what we can launch to Mars with uh, Falcon Heavy. We could probably launch a little bit more than this given the 5,000 meters per second, but it depends on how much the core actually weighs with the hydraulic separation thingy for the booster and the reinforcement and all. So we'll have to get additional numbers for that. I, I feel confident that 5 tons to Mars is a safe bet in any case. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.